it's October now, but it's really quite spring-like. It's the morning, it's a Monday, so we've got the promise of the whole week ahead of us and the promise of maybe finding something today at low tide. There's about two hours before low tide. I usually get down to the river about two hours before low tide and chase the tide out and then I usually have about another two hours afterwards. Now the other day I was down here and I didn't have my camera. I was down here with my family and I found a little plastic toy. I actually filmed it in portrait so it's not the same format as uh, my usual video but I'll, I'll put it up here anyway. It looks like it could be some kind of, I don't know, mid 20th century toy? Possibly a Bambi? Shall we have a look? Oh, yeah. let's, let's pull it out. Oh. Nice. Mud squirting out of its head. Typically, I'm not dressed in my mudlarking gear, so I'm not prepared. So I have to tug it out. His little leg is stuck under there. Right, so I've extracted it. Although the end of his little hoof did come off because I think it's stuck in this concrete um, thing here. So I'll just go and give him a little wash. Look, it looks like a little Bambi. You just never know what you're going to find down on the river. Here we are. Here he is. But anyway, let's go and see what the tide has left out for us overnight. If anything, that is the excitement of it. And that's what keeps us all coming back, I think. That's what keeps us all coming back. Now, see what's down here. It is part of a, a sheave, or it could be a whole one, actually. See the round edge just there? Oh yeah, a nice one. Often made of lignum vitae, so they last much longer out of the water than the wood that we often find down here that as soon as I get it home it starts falling apart. So I'll take that with me. There's a pipe stem here as well. And that's all it is, a stem. So look at this guys, I have just found a big pile of bullets down here, look. Look at these, like a big, yeah, big dumping ground of them. Interesting. All of them live as well by the looks of it. I wonder what went on there then. So what are these then? They're not my usual 303 rounds, are they? Crikey, somebody must have just dumped them years and years ago and uh, the mud has been washing off for years and years and uh, they've just been exposed. A massive pile of bullets. Interesting. Now obviously I can't keep those because they're live question is what to do with them. So as there's quite a significant amount, I'll collect them up and take them to the police station. Right, can you see what I've just spotted down here? Of course you can just there, right in the center. The screen, it's a little pipe hiding. Let's have a look, see how much stem there is. Not a lot, but I can see a nice maker on the heel there. 
a nice clear maker's mark. So that would be another very nice addition to my collection. I'm having a little scrape around here spotted a few things. Strange thing here, it's got some lovely ir iridescence on it, a piece of glass, but I don't know what it once was. It's broken there at the top. Look at that, look at that colour, isn't it gorgeous? And a pointy end. What did you come from? A glass peacock. And look, just down here, just down there, there's a lovely glass button. Very pretty. I wonder if that adorned some kind of posh cardigan back in the early 1900s. Lots of little things here to look at. Little pieces of metal, pins, fastenings, tiny bits of metal. What are you doing here? What did you used to belong to? Look, this looks like a coin or a token or something. I wonder what's underneath all that crustiness. Something, it's probably a farthing or something like that. We'll take it home and do a little reveal and I'll clean it in a non-abrasive manner, I promise. Oh look down here, I know what that is, that's a pen nib look, look how sharp that is. Little pen nib. Well, I've just seen something a little special down here and I mean little but also I do mean special just down there look it's a tiny little buckle and it looks quite ornate quite fancy shape wise it's just here look move that stone look at this teeny little thing Oh, that is adorable. It's so dainty. It looks like it could be from the belt of a miniature Tudor or a miniature little historical person. Maybe not Tudor, but isn't that absolutely beautiful? I found some lovely buckles during my time mudlarking over the years. I'd say that this one's probably one of my nicest tiny buckles. Okay, look, I've just seen something down here which could be potentially exciting. It could be absolutely nothing, but it could be something, you know. At this stage, I really don't know, but can you see what I'm looking at just there, behind all that muck? It looks like some kind of lettering and I'm hoping that it's a sign. Um, now, <laughs> I haven't even touched it yet, so of course it's going to be rather disappointing if I touch it and it turns out to be plastic, but if it's metal it could be a, an enamel sign and I don't know, well there's only one way to find out really isn't there? No, it's definitely not plastic. So look, there is something here. Ooh, this could be exciting. Or it might be not exciting. I might get it out and there'll be hardly any of it there. What is it? Oh, you're going to join me on this very exciting discovery. 
the big reveal. Or maybe it will be so huge that I won't be able to get it out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Okay. Yeah, look, it's definitely part of a metal sign. Chances are there's not going to be a lot there. It ends here, look. And you can see the jagged edge just there. But look, we're going to have to get it out just to see what it was. Where's the other end, I wonder? It's still going on down there and there. Oh, and even there. Okay, look, so here's an update. I have managed to get what there is of it out of the mud. It's here. It's in a pretty bad state, so I don't really hold up much hope that there's going to be anything significant on there, but I am going to give it a rinse off. So come on down with me and let's take a look. Whew, it's pretty heavy. Let's see if we can at least guess what it might have been in a previous life. Let's get it in the water. Well, you can see some of the lettering. Oh, I think it's some kind of juice. Lime juice, maybe. <laughs> oh dear, I am gonna have to take it, of course. You never know, it might fade and, um, you know. I mean, I've got to take it, haven't I? I've got to round up with it. What do you reckon? kind of juice. Oh my goodness. Right, well I'll stash it up here until I'm ready to go home. made in West Germany. Ah, oh, I rather like that. And is this another buckle? I'm having trouble kneeling down today, you know. I lost one of my knee pads the other day. I was wandering along, I was out at night doing a little night lark and all of a sudden I realised I only had one knee pad on and the other one was gone and I couldn't find it because it's pitch black and so now I'm going around kneeling down on one knee and uh, toppling over occasionally. I need to get some new knee pads or another new knee pad and so if anybody finds a knee pad washed up on the river somewhere it might be mine. Anyway look, it looks like there might be another buckle here attached to this nail. Yeah here we go look a little buckle, maybe not quite as ornate as the last one, but a little buckle nevertheless. It's the day of little buckles, amongst other things, and big enamel signs. Look, there's a tiny bullet here, a lot smaller than my usual bullet finds. Now, is that from a point twenty-two? Bullet experts, what do you reckon? Right, everyone, I'm going through an internal struggle at the moment. Can you guess what it is? 
Do I lug this back to the car with me? Or not? I mean, look at it. It's, it's essentially an old piece of metal with barely discernible lettering on it, which is just going to add to my clutter. Or do I look upon it as an old enamel sign with some curiosity value that I need to hold up when I do my roundup. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm having a struggle. Help me out here. Help me out. I bet there's two camps out there. Leave it, keep it. Do you know what? I'm going to keep you guessing. I'm going to keep you guessing till the roundup. Put your guesses in the comments below. Did I take this home or did I leave it? I think there's a coin down here. See it? Let's pick it up before the wake takes it away. The tide's all the way in now. Is it going to be modern? No, it's no. Well, it, I mean, it's not ancient. It's not from ancient Rome, that's for sure. But what is it? That is. that Ooh. who's that then it's Italian oh no um oh, I think it's Belgique Belgique Belgian coin. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Thank you very much indeed for joining me on my little mudlarking expedition along the River Thames in which I attempt to clean the Thames up from all the odd things that have been dropped and lost in it over the years. Indeed, that's what one would think after today's video. What a strange and eclectic mix of objects from tiny little buckles and pen nibs to plastic bambies to signs to bullets. The things that we have lost over the years and thrown in the River Thames, it just never ceases to amaze me. So where are we going to start? kind of hard to know where to start. Firstly, I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you're all in good health, that you're all happy, that your week's going well, and that you are looking forward to the week to come. So where am I going to start? I tell you what, I'm going to get rid of a few of the, the smaller, tiny little items before I get to the two main ones, which are the bullet, it's the bullets rather, and the, um, the sign, which I know, of course, you are dying to know if I picked it up and took it home. You will soon find out. Right, so let's start with some of the tiny finds. Interestingly, some of the tiny weeny little finds seem to have more information on them so we can find more out about them than the large finds. For example, the little tiny pen nib here. Look at it, it's so small and so dainty. But actually, when I cleaned it off, there is marked on there very clearly John Bond Crystal Palace marking ink. So plenty of information there to find out something about it. And so it probably dates to the mid 19th century. And the reference to Crystal Palace is probably related to the Great Exhibition in London at Crystal Palace in 1851. And so maybe John Bond was exhibiting there. And I have managed to find a little bit of information about him, a blog which speaks about John Bond and his marking ink. And there is a good photograph on that blog of the nib and the box that it came in along with some marking ink and instructions. And the coins, yes, the coins. Well, a little bit of a uh, disappointment, I'm afraid, on the grand reveal for the crusty coin, which you saw earlier. I did clean it off and it's all a little bit um, difficult to read and I 
think that it is a George the Fifth farthing with Britannia on one side. So I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, but that's what I got anyway. The sign, the enamel sign. How many of you guessed that I bought it home? Well, if you did, you were right. I did bring it home. It's here beside me, but I've got to tell you now, some things should just stay on the foreshore. And this is one of them because it really, right, let me hold it up and show it to you. It really is a rusty, messy piece of metal. There's not a lot that I'm gonna be able to do with that or anybody else, even, even our good friend, Sci Finds, I'm sure would have a little bit of a challenge trying to do an upcycling project with this old enamel sign. However, I didn't want to leave it where it was, so I bought it. I will be disposing of it after this video. But what I would like to know from all of you is, what did it come from originally? Lime juice, I'm guessing. But what lime juice? Now, are you somebody who's looking at this and thinking, I know exactly what lime juice that's from? There's not much to go on, not much of a clue. John Bond of Crystal Palace was a lot, was a lot better at putting all his information on the tiniest pen nib. However, the lime juice people weren't quite as, um, as efficient. So if you know what lime juice this enamel sign would have been advertising, then please let me know. And even better, if you can, send me a picture of the actual advert. The bullets, that great big spread of bullets, which has been there for a very long time, I should think. Now, looking at them, they are nine millimeter rounds and they almost certainly date back to World War II. Now, my friend David did tell me a little bit more about them. I'm going to read you his message. So yeah, nine millimeter rounds, which were in all likelihood used in the famous Sten gun from World War II. I say this because the date of manufacture shows that they were made in 1942. Often if I find one little bullet, I will just hurl it right into the middle of the river. But this was a lot, so I wanted to do the right thing and take it into the police station. So I'm gonna tell you what happened. So yesterday I went down to the police station. I went in with my little box of bullets and the policeman behind the counter went off and made a phone call and he said, unfortunately, we can't take this ammunition in we do not have the means to dispose of it here. So what you're going to have to do is take it home with you and call 101. So I duly did that. And at the moment, whilst I'm talking to you here, I have the bullets here in this margarine tub. Here they are, look. Little notes in there saying where and when I found it. Or them, rather. And here they are. Here they are all together in there. So I called 101 when I got home. As you can imagine, it's often quite hard to get through, but I did get through. And I now have an appointment with the police. They are coming to see me here at home on Saturday tomorrow, because it's Friday as I'm recording this video. Um, they're coming here tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning and they will be taking away with them this margarine or butter tub full of nine millimeter bullets from World War II. We're taking them away with them and disposing of them in the way that they dispose of live ammunition. It wasn't until I was sort of thinking about what I was going to say for this video and about these bullets um, and then thinking about World War II, etc. that I suddenly uh, realised it dawned on me that today is Armistice Day. So now what I just want to talk to you about especially given the fact that today is Armistice Day and Sunday is over here in the UK, Remembrance Sunday, where we remember 
all the people affected by war, the armed services, people who have fought in the war, people who have lost their lives, and people who are uh, even now today affected by war. But I wanted to show you a couple of my finds. Um, this padlock here, and I did do a video about it a few years ago, this padlock comes from a man who had uh, a shipyard in Limehouse. He was called G.E. Morrow. And he was running this shipyard in the late 19th century. And his son, Sidney Morrow, was just 18 when he went to fight in World War I. And very sadly, just a month or two before the end of World War I, he lost his life. I went to visit Limehouse, where in the churchyard there, there's a big memorial dedicated to all those local people who died and fought in World War I. And Sydney's name is actually on the memorial there. And so it was quite special going back there with this padlock. I mean, this padlock literally did unlock a story of a young lad who went off to fight and died far too soon. So here's remembering Sydney Morrow, the son of George Edward Morrow and Clara Morrow. They actually had about 12 children and Sydney died. And Frank, the another brother, an older brother, he also fought in World War I, but he survived and he went on to fight in World War II as well. But this is one of my very special finds. For me, this is the essence of mudlarking. It doesn't look to be very much, but it's probably one of my most precious finds. It's a simple brass luggage tag. On it is marked F Jury 72 Woolwich Road, SE10. And so I am now going to take you down to the graveyard, which is not very far away from where I live, to introduce you to Fred Jury. I haven't been down here for a while, but I know that Fred is down here somewhere. And I have a feeling he may be somewhere behind these brambles. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a challenge. I always have trouble finding him, but he's definitely somewhere around here. I found him. He is in here behind these brambles. I can just see his headstone in there. He's just in there. Unfortunately, I wasn't forward planning enough to bring some shears, which I really should have done. But you can see his headstone just in there. But I am going to clear away as much as I can. There he is. Frederick, in loving memory of Frederick. Okay, let's clear some of this out of the way. Well, look at these two heroes. They've cleaned up Fred's grave. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Clive and Dave. Thanks very much, guys. No, no problem. No problem. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Well, that is an improvement. Let me introduce you to Frederick Jury, somebody very dear to my heart. This is his luggage tag and those of you that watch my channel regularly will probably have heard of him because I found this I don't know about six or seven years ago now and it's a luggage tag which bears his name F Jury of 72 Woolwich Road SE10 
and I was able to find out all about Fred's life and it eventually led me here to his grave. Well, the story of Fred is that he fought in World War I. He actually joined the Australian Imperial Force. He fought in the trenches. He suffered quite extensive injuries. And then he returned to London. He did survive the war and he married his landlady, who is here, Millie Jury. Her real name was Sarah. And I do like to come and see Fred every now and again, especially on a day like today, which is Armistice Day, Friday the 11th of November. Gone but not forgotten. And Millie Jury, his wife, is actually also buried in this same cemetery or graveyard, but I haven't managed to actually find her grave yet. It was very moving, actually, as I went back to my car after laying the flowers down on Fred's grave. Um, I could hear the last post playing right at the top of the hill in the cemetery. Uh, so I stood and listened to it for a while and then I went up to see who was playing it and came across a group of people, including, I think, the mayor of Greenwich, laying some wreaths at the war memorial, which is situated at the top of this cemetery and there were a couple of um, old men laying wreaths and I wondered if perhaps they had actually fought in World War II. I wanted to go and ask them but there was a, a lot of people um, milling around and so I, I decided not to but yeah it was it was very very moving and such a good opportunity um, today this Friday uh, Armistice Day and also of course Sunday when you're watching this video to just be grateful if we're living in a country which is not ravaged by war. Something to be grateful for and a good time for reflection and to just, yeah, wish that there could be more peace in the world. More peace in the world. And it's good, you know, to find these objects in the river which just remind me of the people who fought and you know a reason why I'm able to sit here today and not have to worry about a missile being fired through my window so I am eternally grateful for that so thank you Sydney thank you Sydney and thank you Fred and thank you to everybody else well I hope that you enjoyed that excursion along the foreshore and that you are inspired by the finds which come out of the River Thames. If you fancy seeing some other finds, you know, there's so many mudlarks out there. And if you are on Instagram, you might want to go on there and put hashtag mudlarking and take a look at some of the amazing artifacts that these mudlarks are finding. Um, it's really just so inspiring. And there's also a few mystery finds. Um, you know, often people are asking for advice or information about their finds. So if you haven't done it already, um, go and check out some of the mudlarking posts on Instagram. Right, well, um, I've come to the end of my video. And as always, I want to say a huge thank you to you all for watching my videos and for being part of this YouTube community. I'm always so grateful to get your messages and your comments and your your IDs. You know, it's it's um it's really great and I'm very very fortunate with the people that watch my videos. It's very rare that I get nasty comments and you know the internet can be a pretty horrible place at times, but I'm very, very lucky to have such a great community of people and you are those people. So thank you very much indeed. And special thanks too for everybody who has donated to my Kofi account and to the super thanks. I truly appreciate it and I'm very, very grateful indeed. And thank you very much to each and every one of you for being yourself. So I hope that your week continues to go well I wish you much luck and happiness. And until the next time, I'm sending you lots of love from here in London. Oh, and yeah, so does Bambi. So does Bambi. I forgot to mention Bambi. Poor little, 
poor little battered Bambi. Here she is and uh, yeah, kind of vintage, I think. If you recognize her, you know, the, the make or whatever, please let me know. She is um, footless here. Had a bit of trouble getting her out of the concrete block that she was stuck in. But here she is. She's going to join the Tideline Art Thames Orphanage. She's probably going to be hmm, one of the more vintage additions. So maybe she can give some wise advice to all the others on the Tideline Art Thames Orphanage shelf. Okay, everyone, from me and Bambi, that's goodbye. Lots of love. See you soon.